You might still be weeping over the end of Adventure Time, because, I mean, we still are, but thankfully the series finale brought a lot of the lore full circle. At long last, we finally have enough information to build a complete chronology of Adventure Time. Hi, I'm Jacob with Channel Frederator, and today we're going to be exploring the Adventure Timeline in full. A few notes before we start, though. First, we have to acknowledge Yagam, who painstakingly put together an incredibly in-depth timeline of Adventure Time and all of its multiverses over at atchronology.com. We, we owe him a Lot. Further, showrunner Adam Mudo has stressed that the comics aren't canon, so we're going to be completely ignoring them today. We're only focused on events that were specifically referenced in the show. And lastly, we're going to be using the Grey Mushroom War as our reference point for Year Zero. It's just standard adventure timeline etiquette. All right, let's do this. Primordial Monsters, more than 13.7 billion years before the Mushroom War, which we'll refer to from now on as BMW. Yeah, I know, like the car, but it's the best we've got. The Big Bang, the real one, was 13.7 billion years ago, but according to the Lich, before there was time, there was nothing, and before there was nothing, there were monsters. Stars of this monster soup include Hunts and Abadir and Orgolorg. Really makes you feel good about the innate nature of the universe, huh? The Big Bang kicks off the multiverse. One would assume that this event also spurs the creation of several cosmic entities, like Golb, the elements and catalyst comets on Earth. 3.7 billion years, BMW. It took the Earth another 9.2 billion years to form, and another cool 800 million years for life to emerge. Ever since, four core elements have always been present. And no, we're not talking about the Avatar elements yet. These elements are fire, ice, candy, and slime. And lumps. Lumps are the anti-element, I guess. The beings that embody these elements are called elementals. The elementals are mortals who are continually reincarnated. We don't know when or why, though. Even Glob doesn't know how the comet reincarnates itself. And yet, a catalyst comet strikes the Earth every 1,000 years, bringing an agent of change that can be good or evil. And evil includes... well... The green catalyst comet and the creation of the crown. 65 million years, BMW. In the twilight hours of Earth's Cretaceous era, the ice elemental Urgent's Evergreen points out to the other elementals that the green comet hurtling towards Earth is writhing in a particularly disconcerting way. To combat the comet's imminent destruction of life, Evergreen builds a crown whose phantasmo circuitry would bound to its first bearer and grant them their one deepest wish. When the other elementals reject Evergreen's plan, he ices them, naturally. Evergreen powers his crown but becomes indisposed at the last minute, leaving the responsibility of using the crown to his maligned and mentally scarred dinosaur assistant, Gunther. But Gunther's deepest wish isn't to destroy the comet, it's to become Evergreen. Gunther thereby turns the crown into an artifact that gives the wearer ice power at the cost of their own identity and sanity, and some form of every wearer's consciousness is stored in the crown circuitry. Meanwhile, the green comet strikes Earth, inciting a mass extinction. In 65 million years, the catalyst force introduced by this comet would become the Lich, a monster who vows to extinguish all life. Vampires appear. Over 7 million years, BMW. According to Hunts and Abadir, vampires predate humans on Earth. The demon Abadir has previously been on Earth since its origin. We don't know when he takes over the rule of the Nightosphere, so for convenience's sake, let's just say it it happens around now. Orgolorg banished to Earth, 10,000 to 5,000 years BMW. Another inhabitant of the aforementioned primordial monster soup was Orgolorg, the breaker of worlds who tyrannically ruled the solar system for eons. Between 10,000 to 5,000 years ago, Orgolorg attempts to intercept a catalyst comet and absorb its powerful essence, but Abraham Lincoln, the king of Mars, sends Grob Gob Globgrod to stop him with a sweet flame sword. Oh yeah, there's already an advanced society on Mars and everyone important there is apparently immortal. Anyway, Grob Gob Globgrod Grod banishes Orgolorg to Earth, where Orgolorg forgets everything, including his own identity. The gravity of Earth squashes Orgolorg into a penguin, who's eventually renamed Gunther by a future crown wearer. So just to be clear, this Gunther is not actually related to the dinosaur trapped in the crown circuitry. Orgolorg maintains his immortality, though, and continues to appear throughout human history. The Rainicorn Dog Wars, about 2000 BMW. Elsewhere, a nasty, long-lasting war breaks out between the two primary inhabitants of the Crystal Dimension, long, rainbow-bodied unicorn-like creatures called Rainicorns and a race of intelligent dogs. The so-called Rainicorn Dog Wars are fought over territory in the Crystal Dimension. Although fighting ends several hundred years after the Mushroom War, the group in power of the Crystal Dimension would change constantly, and hate crimes between the two groups aren't uncommon. Golb attacks Mars. 200 BMW. Golb is the most powerful cosmic entity in the multiverse, the embodiment of discord and chaos. Golb appears on Mars and swallows Margols, the wife of Grob Gob Globgrod's younger brother, Magic Man. Golb's power is so strong that not even the power of Prismo's wish room can bring her back. Margold ceases to exist 
anywhere. Moco founded, about 20 BMW. Sometime before the Mushroom War, Mosef Mastro Giovanni founds Moco, a factory that would build the most impressive robots in the millennium to come. The facility is primarily dedicated to sentient robots called Moes, including Moes' personal favorite, Bimo, who is designed to receive love. Mo himself slowly transitions into a cyborg and so survives the Mushroom War. The Enchiridion is discovered and Marceline is born. 5 BMW. Simon Petrikov, a professor of archaeology, discovers an ancient book known as the Enchiridion while on an expedition to the Hindu Kush. Although Simon realizes the profundity of his discovery, he's mocked by the press and his fellow academics. The origin and age of the Enchiridion is unknown, but it's among the most powerful artifacts in the multiverse. If utilized with the correct gems, the Enchiridion can create passageway to different dimensions or enable time travel. This same year, Hunson Abadir has his first and only child, with a human. The half-demon, half-human child is named Marceline. Evergreen's crown discovered, 2 BMW. A few years later, Simon purchases a mysterious crown from an old dock worker in northern Scandinavia. Simon jokingly shows the crown to his fiancée and fellow antiquarian, Betty Groff, by placing it upon his head. The moment he does, the crown starts transforming him. Over many years, Simon's skin turns blue, his hair grows long and white, his body temperature drops, he develops ice powers, and he starts losing his sanity. Betty appears to run away after this initial incident, but in reality, over a thousand years in the future, Simon opens a portal to say goodbye to Betty, and she jumps through it, but we'll get to that when we come to it. Here it is, Year Zero, The Great Mushroom War. Only the elementals who saw visions of an ominous future guessed what was about to take place. However, the Earth is presently inhospitable to magic, so the elementals' powers are incredibly limited. Patient St. Pym, the ice elemental, though, refuses to bite it. She goes into the ocean and sinks herself in an ice prism that preserves her life through the war-torn times to come. The Mushroom War is a nuclear war whose origins have become obsolete. The pivotal element is the detonation of the Mushroom Bomb, a gigantic nuclear explosion with a sickening green hue, similar to the Green Catalyst Comet. The site of the mushroom bomb detonation is a subway station, possibly in New York or LA. The bomb additionally releases the corporeal incarnation of the Lich. The site of the bomb's impact becomes a cesspool of toxic waste known as the Lich's Well of Power. The effects of the Great Mushroom War are massive. Earth's climate changes, cities and infrastructure are destroyed, humans nearly become extinct, and nuclear waste turns anyone unlucky enough to touch it into a mutagenic zombie. These Losers are still alive and biohazardous 1,000 years in the future. The only positive is that elemental powers seem to reset. The power of the candy element was stifled immediately before the war, but shortly thereafter, gum is naturally occurring. The Great Mushroom War is also likely responsible for a chunk of the Earth coming clean off, although some theories hold that that was done by the Blue Catalyst Comet, Zero AMW, after the Mushroom War, of course. Another major event happens in Year Zero. The Blue Catalyst Comet strikes Earth shortly after the Mushroom War. As a convenient counterbalance to the ultimate evil embodied by the Lich, this comet embodies good. Its first incarnation is a butterfly and will eventually become the human Finn Mertens. Then again, how farm world Finn can exist in a timeline where the blue comet misses Earth is one of the greatest and most frustrating anomalies of all adventure time dub, but that's a conversation for another time. Another adventure time? No, 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 I immediately retract that joke, I'm sorry. The Demise of Simon Petrikov, around 5 AMW. Some humans were able to survive by merit of not being completely human, like Marceline, or were kept alive by magic, like Simon. Shortly after the bomb, these two survivors find each other and travel together, but continued exposure to the crown and the increasing need to use its powers defensively are wearing on Simon. Simon leaves Marceline when she's about 10, fearing that he'll soon become too dangerous. Simon disappears until he fully transitions into the Ice King. Simon did summon someone to take care of Marceline in his stead, though. Hunson Abadir, serial French fry thief and the father that Marceline had never met. Vampires eradicated and Founder's Island established, around 13 AMW. After Abadir's failed attempt at guardianship, Marceline becomes a vampire hunter, and her demonness allows her to gain the powers of her victims, which is real handy. A few years later, Marceline befriends the few remaining humans, led by Two Bread Tom, who seems to enjoy sitting by the campfire and singing sitcom openings from the 80s. The humans now wear animal hats as disguise and protection against their main predators, vampires, and rainicorns, who arrived and discovered that humans are delicious. Finn seems to agree on this, by the way. I just thought I'd mention it because it happens and then it's never mentioned again. 
It's a, it's a little off-putting. The humans are preparing to sail away from the mainland, not just because of predators and oozers, but because atmospheric readings are pretending a major shift. The last fleet of vampires attack with the Vampire King in tow. Marceline orders the humans to depart without her and slays the vampires herself. But the Vampire King's final act is to turn Marceline, making her, ironically, the last vampire. After a long voyage, Two Bread Tom lands on what becomes Founders Island. He's celebrated as one of the titular founders who are deified over time. In the coming years, the humans branch out onto the surrounding islands and construct a giant guardian so nothing dangerous can reach them, and also so no one leaves. Those wanting to depart are belittled as hiders. As human technology improves, seekers are fine-tuned by an electronic chip to stop hiders. No one leaves the islands for nearly a thousand years. Ooh, and the revitalization of magic by 149 AMW. Rising ocean levels after the Mushroom War change Earth's geography. What was presumably the United States, or part of it, has become a smallish continent that's actually friendly to life. This new continent is called Ooh, spelled three O's. By 1.49 AMW, magic is strong enough in Ooh to stop comets, and wizardry has been revitalized. Birth of Bonnebel and Nettie Bubblegum, 1.72 AMW. Over time, the gum that started appearing around Ooh gains sentience and the Mother Gum is formed. Only two people are known to have left the Mother Gum, Bonnebel and Nettie Bubblegum. The rise and fall of Uncle Gumbald, around 1.86 AMW. Bonnie and Nettie build a home around the candy juice tree Nettie leaned on for comfort shortly after leaving the mother gum. When Bonnebel is in her early teens, she makes some relatives for herself. The first candy people, Uncle Gumbald, Aunt Lolly, and Cousin Chicle. Bonnie and her new relatives found Candy Town. They upgrade the house, farm the nearby land, create roads, all that good stuff. But Gumbald starts planning a candy city and wants to use Dum Dum Juice to get Bonnie and Nettie out of his way. Dum Dum Juice being a solution that causes candy people to become more docile and childlike. Bonnie fights back though, and Gumbald is dumb along with Lolly and Chicle, who Gumbald had previously dumbified. They become the first candy citizens, and Bonnie declares herself the princess. God, that is very messed up now that I'm saying all this out loud. The Candy Kingdom grows, about 500 to 700 AMW. Bonnebel, now Princess Bubblegum, borrows Gumbald's aspiration to build a candy civilization. Her kingdom slowly expands out of her tree home with Nettie. She creates banana guards and the Gumball Guardians, and she's sorta dating Mr. Cream Puff, the boyfriend that Gumbald had previously made for her. In the intermediate stages of development, Bubblegum is visited by Shoko, a reincarnation of the Blue Comet. Being a mercenary thief, Shoko was sent to steal an amulet in Bubblegum's possession. She successfully swipes it after befriending Bubblegum, but in her flight, Shoko falls into the yet uncovered radioactive river surrounding the kingdom, becoming horribly mutated. She dies at the base of the tree that will eventually become Finn's treehouse. Over time, the Candy Kingdom prospers. However, the wilder nature of the kingdom's earlier years encouraged rather unfortunate authoritarian impulses in Bubblegum, such such as creating an elite force of hundreds of soldiers called rattle balls, finding them too violent, and then killing them all. Wow! That's a big yikes! The success of the Candy Kingdom inspires other kingdoms to spawn in the following centuries, including the elemental kingdoms of fire, slime, and ice, which is created by the remnants of Simon Petrikov, who is now known as the Ice King. The Margles Incident, about 600 AMW. Meanwhile, Mars is uneasy about the possibility of the second coming of Golb. To prevent this, Magic Man uses his long curated scientific and magical strength to build the Magical Automated Resistance Generating Laser Energy Supplier, or Margles, named after his wife. Aw, that's sweet. Against the judgment of his older brother, Magic Man goes to Olympus Mons to install Margles, but is overcome by his desire to hold on to the image of his wife. The resulting struggle causes Margles to fall off Olympus Mons. That's not so sweet. Magic Man banished to Earth, 798 AMW. After Olympus Mons, Magic Man's personality drastically changes. He starts unleashing a series of mean-spirited prank plagues upon the Martians, like turning Mars' water into hair that would make you go bald if you drank it. Sick of Magic Man's harmful antics, Abraham Lincoln and Grob Gob Glob Grod banish Magic Man to Earth. They supply him with a transporter back home, though, that only works through feeling love. Yet Magic Man, who is understandably traumatized, thinks the transporter is just broken, so so he simply continues being a jerk on Earth. Billy fights the Lich, about 970 AMW. The Lich re-emerges and begins to convert Earth's life force into an unholy power to destroy Ooh. Before he succeeds though, Billy, or sorry, <coughs> Billy! 
legendary hero of his era, pummels him into the candy tree in the heart of the Candy Kingdom, surrounding him in a prison of amber that can hold him as long as he's unable to invade the mind of anyone who enters his proximity. But whatever, I'm sure that would never happen. Birth of Jake the Dog, 984 AMW. An alien shapeshifter, Warren Ampersand, serially bites and thereby impregnates creatures with his offspring in a long con scheme to live forever. His victim this time is a dog in Ooh named Joshua. Joshua gives birth from the bump on his head as his wife Margaret gives biological birth. Their sons are named Jake and Germain, respectively. The birth of Finn Mertens and the first humans leave the islands, also 984 AMW. On the islands, helper Minerva Campbell and reformed con man Martin Mertens give birth to their son Finn. When Finn is still a baby, people wronged by Martin in the past attack while Minerva's at work. Martin and Finn are chased onto a raft and barraged by a storm and also that guardian that we mentioned, you know, the one that stops people from leaving. Martin damages the guardian and is thrown into the sea while the massive wave from the guardian's collapse sends Finn's raft deep into the ocean. They become the first people to leave the island since its founding. Finn survives the long voyage with a breadstick wand, literally a wand that produces breadsticks. The raft washes up on Ooh, making Finn the first actual non-vampire cyborg cursed wizard human in Ooh in nearly a thousand years. He's found and raised by Margaret and Joshua. The island's most powerful seeker, Kara, is sent to look for Finn. She lands on Ooh but suffers complete amnesia. Martin is saved by pirates, having likely suffered brain damage and some memory loss. He reverts to his con man ways, his antics escalating to a cosmic crime that imprisons him in a celestial fortress called the Citadel. The Epidemic, about 989 AMW. Dr. Gross, the head of the Seeker program, begins to conduct immoral experiments that lead to a fatal virus claiming 62% of the general population. The fatality rate among helpers is 100%. So Minerva, the final helper, uploads her brain map to the island's computer and creates a network of hundreds of Minerva bots. Humanity consolidates on Founders Island. Finn obtains the Enchiridion, 996 AMW. On Ooh, after Joshua and Margaret pass, Finn and Jake move to an epic treehouse with Bimo and start a life of adventuring. They go to Crag Mountain, where the Enchiridion has ended up. Finn passes the trials that are presented to him, shows his color as a true hero, and wins the book. The Lich returns, still 996 AMW. A snail in the Lich's amber chamber falls under his spell and cracks open his amber prison. Finn defeats the Lich with the power of... L l l liking someone a lot. But a party crashing Ice King drops bubblegum into the well of power, allowing the Lich to possess her. One Godzilla moment later, and an emergency surgery expels the Lich from bubblegum. But the loss of candy biomass in the process temporarily de-ages her, making her 13. But she grows out of it pretty quickly, and unfortunately, the Lich is still possessing that dumb snail. The death of Abraham Lincoln, 998 AMW. After 200 years, Magic Man is brought back to Mars to stand trial for his misdeeds, except that Magic Man and swaps his body with Jake's. Abraham Lincoln realizes his mistake too late after sentencing Jake, and offers death his immortality for Jake's soul. Grob Gob Globgrod becomes King of Mars. By the way, death implies that Lincoln's made a deal with him before, which could explain some of the, uh, <coughs> historical discrepancies here. The Lich returns again, and the Farm World timeline is created. Also, 998 AMW. After laying low, the Lich leaves his snail bod, kills Billy, and possesses his body. Finn then gathers the Enchiridion's gems for who he thinks is Billy, but once receiving the gems, the Lich then opens a gateway to Prismo, the Wishmaster. He wishes for the extinction of all life, but Finn and Jake are spared as they follow the Lich to Prismo's time room, which exists outside of all realities, which essentially protects them until they each make a wish themselves. Finn wishes the Lich never even ever existed, creating an alternate farm world timeline where the mushroom bomb never went off, and where Finn, under the influence of the crown, causes it to detonate and for the Lich to possess farm world Jake. Our Jake, meanwhile, uses his wish to change the Lich's wish to send Jake and Finn back to Ooh. The Lich then becomes incapacitated in Prismo's time room. Finn obtains the Grass Sword, and Betty comes to Ooh. 999 AMW. Finn ends up with the Grass Sword, an incredibly powerful cursed blade made to be part of its user for all eternity. Finn figures out how to work the Cursed Blade to his advantage, though. For now. Shortly thereafter, Betty Groff, Simon Petrikov's fiance, jumps through that portal we talked about. She dedicates herself to saving Simon from the crown. Within the year, she becomes Magic Man's apprentice. Prismo's death, the Citadel jailbreak, and the Lich transformed, also 999 AMW. Finn discovers that his father is at the Citadel and seeks Prismo's aid. The incapacitated Lich, still in Prismo's time room, sees his opening. He kills Prismo and his sleepy host body and is taken to the Citadel as a prisoner. The Lich melts all of the crystalline prisons of the Citadel and incites a 
mass breakout. Finn swipes the Lich with some of the Citadel Guardian's weird nutrient blood, transforming him into a gigantic, seemingly harmless baby called Sweet Pea. Sweet Pea becomes the adopted child of Tree Trunks and Mr. Pig, who also exist. We haven't mentioned them yet, but here they are. They're Sweet Pea's parents now. Also, Finn discovers that Martin is a complete wad. Martin ditches Finn, who loses his arm in an effort to make him stay. The grass sword creates a little flower on the stump of Finn's arm. It eventually regrows Finn's arm, complete with a green thorn, a remnant of the grass sword's curse. Prismo is reborn and the Finn sword is created and it's still 9.99 AMW. Prismo enacts his plan B, which is incredibly convoluted, but involves pickles and dreams. Long story short, an alternate reality version of Jake sleeps for eternity to revive Prismo, while an alternate version of Finn has his consciousness shoved into a sword, henceforth called the Finn Sword. The recorporealization of Grob Gob Glob Grod, still 9.99 AMW. A faux comet, which is actually Martin's spaceship, hurtles toward Mars off schedule to the real comet. To save his planet from destruction, Grob Gob Glob Grod faces the comet head on, averting catastrophe, but but sacrificing their corporeal form and therefore ability to rule Mars. The four heads of Grob Gob Glob Grod come to circle the Earth like satellites. Normal Man. Later that year, Magic Man attempts to use Glob's discarded helmet to transform into the Glob Head. Instead, all of his powers transfer to Betty, who is immediately gripped by wizard insanity. Magic Man becomes Normal Man. The first Candy Kingdom election, 1000 AMW. The self-proclaimed King of Ooh holds a barely legal election for the position of Princess of the Candy Kingdom. Bubblegum refuses the campaign and loses. She relocates to Gumball's cabin, but reinstates her position when the Candy People perform a cuckoo during the vampire resurgence a couple months later. The return of Orgalorg and the Purple Catalyst Comet. Still 1000 AMW. Orgalorg starts resurfacing due to the perfect mix of events. The death of Glob, the proximity of the Catalyst Comet, and the availability of a spaceship. Even though he doesn't initially understand why, Orgalorg rockets into space to try once again to absorb a Catalyst Comet. Orgalorg's true form is restored, but his absorption is thwarted by Finn's grass arm. For the first time ever, a Catalyst Comet meets the incarnation of a previous one. One. The comet offers to take Finn to the end and the beginning, basically offering him a new form of existence, but Finn refuses. He's put a lot of time into Earth and he wants to see how it all plays out. But Martin takes the deal, because of course he does. Finn and Jake then return the neutralized Gunther to Earth. The spread of the Lich's hand, still 1000 AMW. The next few things in this timeline actually all happen within the same year, so I'm not gonna list the year until the year changes again. Ice Finn from Farm World gathers all of the gems necessary for Lich Jake to create create that dimensional portal with farm worlds and Kyridian. Prismo sends Arfin and Jake to take care of it. The Lich's hand is knocked into the open portal, placing a sentient Lich hand in every dimension. The proper Lich is killed via a super weapon called the Maid. Prismo also relieves farm world Finn of the crown's torment as per Arfin's request. Normal Man becomes King of Mars. Normal Man retrieves Glob from orbit. The two brothers reconcile and as Normal Man takes Glob back to Mars, Glob leaves the throne to Normal Man. Mars had fallen into poverty and disarray, but now King Man revitalizes Mars into a prosperous society. Patient Saint Pym awakens and the Grable tradition begins. Patient Saint Pym reawakens in the nethers of the Ice Kingdom and asks the Ice King to kidnap the other elementals. Bubblegum, Flame Princess, and Slime Princess spurn Saint Pym, even after she awakens PB and Slime Princess to their elemental powers. Also, Ice King's fan fictions get scrambled together, inspiring him to string seemingly disparate short stories together with a theme. Over the next thousand years, Ice King's tables evolve into Grables, an oral and visual storytelling tradition. Finn's voyage and the elementals gone awry. Finn's friend Susan Strong is revealed to be the seeker Kara, who was sent to retrieve Finn and lost her memories all those years ago. Susan's finder chip goes haywire, but Finn and company use its data to voyage to the islands. Finn finally meets his mother, kind of, I mean, she's still an uploaded consciousness at this point, but Finn finally tells humans about Ooh. Also, Finn's grass sword merged with the Finn sword to form an alternate version of Finn named Fern, but eventually, Tensions rise between Finn and Fern, concluding in a dramatic fight that sees Fern cut down to size. This traumatizes Finn further than he already has been over the course of the series. While Finn's away, Saint Pym uses Betty as a battery to charge a spell upon the other elementals, but Ice King interrupts her and the ritual goes sideways. The elementals turn into ultra-powerful, distorted versions of themselves, and Ooh and everyone in it is transformed into one of the four hyper-elements. Finn works with the Ice King to save Betty and hands her the farm world and Kyridian to reverse the spell, but Betty double-crosses him. Instead, using the Enchiridion to travel back in time to stop
stop Simon from ever acquiring the crown. Ice King stops Betty's spell, and Betty's cosmic no-no sends her to Mars to do penance. Lumpy Space Princess, the anti-elemental, ends up saving the day. Her sassiness forces a sort of master reboot of life on Ooh, including Gumballed, Chicle, and Lolly, Princess Bubblegum's first relatives. The final demise of the Lich. The Lich Hand is giving Sweet Pea some freaky nightmares. Finn follows the hand to the Lich's well of power, and Sweet Pea follows Finn, but instead of joining with the Lich, Sweet Pea rejects the Lich's evil influence and ending the Lich for good. Yeah, probably. The Great Gum War and Gulb reformed and we're finally at 1001 AMW. Gumbald immediately begins his revenge. He repurposes Fern as the vengeful Green Knight and builds a vast industrial kingdom with impressive speed. The certainty of war is clinched when Gumbald sends Finn, who had gone to Gumbald on a rogue diplomatic mission, back to Bubblegum showered in his trademark dum-dum juice, unbeknownst to Finn, who was told the solution was a benevolent diplomatic tradition. On the battlefield, Finn engulfs himself, Bubblegum, Gumbald, Jake, and Fern with a nightmare concoction, hoping to hash out their conflicts in the dream world. World, which works. Though Lolly juices Gumball just be safe, and peace is established between the Candy Kingdom and Gumballdia. But in a final attempt to save their beloved Simon and Margles, Kingman and Betty tamper with gold. But you can't just tamper with the most powerful being in the multiverse! Golb descends upon Ooh and quickly overwhelms both armies. The Ice King, Betty, and Finn slip down the maw of Golb, where they and the crown are reverted back to their original states as Golb digests them, meaning that once again, whoever wears the crown will have their greatest wish fulfilled. Not that it matters, because everybody watching cries in a highly emotional scene where Finn, Simon, and, and Betty s slowly accept their impending deaths. Back outside, the fighters realize Golb, being the embodiment of Discord, has a weak spot. Structure, like musical harmony. This enables Finn and Simon to escape, but Betty stays with the crown, unsure if its power will still work outside of Golb. She attempts to wish Golb away, which fails. She then modifies her request to meet her truest, deepest wish, which is to save Simon at all costs. As a result, Betty's wish causes her to merge with Golb. Betty Golb then leaves Ooh. The crown is spat out and claimed by Gunther, who apparently wishes to become the Ice King, keeping the crown on brand. As the dust settles, the defeat of the Grass Curse back in the Nightmare Realm kills Fern. Finn plants his seed where Finn and Jake's treehouse was destroyed, and the tree grows to towering heights in a thousand years. Humans return to Ooh, about 1003 AMW. After hearing Finn's tales, the humans decide to leave the islands. Nearly 1000 years after their departure, a fleet of ships arrive to return human civilization to Ooh, a new candy kingdom in space, about 1020 AMW. In 1000 AMW, Princess Bubblegum and trusted Tree Trunk's husband, not Mr. Pig, her other alien husband, that's also a thing that happened, with a capsule containing enough candy matter to start a new candy kingdom on the alien's abandoned home planet. By 1020, this candy colony would be up and running. The future of Ooh, 2000 AMW. The Candy Kingdom expands and likely merges with Gumballia. Despite this, by 2000, the Candy Kingdom is in ruins and appears abandoned. Still, what looks like a buff Gumball Guardian, apparently called a prize ball guardian, carries several candy citizens around in plastic balls, guarded by one of the buff banana guards Bubblegum built for the war, or at least an offshoot of one. Aliens move to Ooh, and space travel becomes more common. Sweet Pea is a giant-sized hero wielding Finn's final sword. Jake and Lady's offspring become a new species called Pups, which appear to have constructed their own city or kingdom. Giant monuments to Finn and Jake are built and also fall to ruin. A thousand years is a long time. And we leave off with Shermie the Cat and Beth the Pup Princess to continue the never-ending cycle of adventuring. Aw, yeah! And that puts us at the end of the adventure timeline as we know it. Thanks for coming along with us. I've been Jacob with Channel Frederator. If you like this video, subscribe. I'm gonna go lie down for a bit, but before I do, remember, Frederator loves you.